Hello and um, good afternoon everyone and welcome to Wednesday edition of Gentle Movement at Home. Thanks for joining us today. It's really great to see everybody. Um, just a couple announcements before we start today with Neil. Uh, so Neil is facilitating um, today for us. Uh, I'm Jen Hansen, Director of Education at Payne BC. Um, just to note that Neil is not able to provide uh, medical advice specific to your condition or health concerns. Um, if you do have questions, please ask your healthcare provider. Um, number of clinics are either open now or offering virtual sessions, and we've just listed those here. Um, next is that we are recording and you will be able to access this session afterwards on our Facebook page in the videos or uh, on our YouTube channel. I was thinking about it um, yesterday and I, and I think we have, um, I think we have, oh, I don't even know if I can say the number. I was gonna say at least around 25 different um, sessions now. So you can look at this one. If you missed one of the ones we've done before, uh, feel free to go back through it and give it a go. Uh, I do, we do launch a poll at the end just to see what you thought of this session. We really appreciate your feedback if you could fill that out. Um, if you do have any questions, put your comments in the chat today. You can email us at education at pmbc.ca or, um, and then, sorry, not or, but finally, we will be taking questions at the end of the session. So if you've got any particular questions that have to do with the movements that Neil is talking about in this session, please feel free to enter them into the Q&A and I'll read them to Neil and, and we'll just take a few minutes after and answer them. Okay, later this week we've got uh, Thursday tomorrow with Will Bateman. Um, so Will did a session for us in the first week of this series. It was excellent. So we're really excited to welcome him back. And then Neil is back with us again next week on Tuesday and Thursday. So, uh, and we've got more, um, more sessions booked and you can see what all of those are if you go to pmbc.ca slash gentle movement at home. I think that's all my announcements. So Neil, let's get to it. Great, thanks Jen. And welcome everyone. Uh, we're going to uh, start seated today, or I'm gonna to start seated today. If, um, if you'd like to um, start laying down on your back, you can do that. So if you do decide to lay down your back um, you know, on a yoga mat, on the carpet, uh, get something behind your head, side if you, maybe you want your knees bent or something behind your knees. Um, so uh, I'll start here just so it's easier to, to do the instruction and easier to see what I'm doing. Um, and so you could uh, start in a chair or start lying down. We'll move, um, at one point we'll move to standing just for uh, a few minutes to do some things in standing. And then I think we'll end um, with everyone who is okay with laying down at the end to lay it back down. Um, at that point, if, if uh, laying down is not going to serve you today, certainly come back to the chair and we can do some things, uh, some things from the chair. All right, so as with all of these sessions, um, the best thing to do is to pay attention to what's happening inside you while you're going through. So use those subtle sensations from your body to give you a guide. So pay attention to what's happening in your breath and pay attention to what's happening in your body tension. Um, if you notice your breath getting tight or your body getting tight, that, then maybe that's a, an indication that it's time to pause and see whether, whether you should continue or whether uh, this is a time to change something. Um, so th those are the best guides. So don't ignore the pain, pay attention to that too, but pay attention to it uh, along with the other uh, sensations that uh, will give you some guidance as to um, how far to go, how long to go, when to pause. And really in the end, if you're not sure when to pause, just and you're starting to feel like, I wonder if I should, go ahead and pause, shift around, take a bit of a break, and then catch back up again. So hopefully by now, if you're laying down the ground, you're laying down comfortable position, if you're sitting in a chair, if you can move away from the back of the chair, just move away from the back of the chair. So. If you're laying down, just let your body relax down into the floor a little bit. If you're sitting in the chair, feel a little bit of the length of your spine, just feel your feet resting on the floor. And if you're okay with it for a moment, just close your eyes and check in and notice how you're doing. Notice what your body feels like right now. Chances are when you took your attention to your body, they went right to the areas of any discomfort or tension or pain. 
So check that out just for a moment and see if you can let it go and look for the other areas of your body. See if you can find the non-pain parts of your body or the parts of your body where there isn't as much pain, tension, or discomfort. And notice what's happening there. And then shift your attention over to your breath and just notice whatever your breath feels like right now, how long it takes to breathe in and breathe out, whether it's smooth, if you can feel your body moving while you breathe, check in with that little pause between inhale and exhale and exhale and inhale. Even while you're doing this, if you feel your body starting to get tight, See if you can find a little bit more relaxation there. And then shift your attention to your thoughts and your emotions and notice whatever's going on there right now. So maybe there's some things you've been thinking about today and some things bringing up emotions today. So just check that out if you can for a moment. Then do your very best to let go of that and bring your attention back to your breath. Notice what's happening in your breath right now from moment to moment. Realize each time you notice something, all of a sudden it's already in the past. And so bring yourself back to what are you noticing now? Just do that over and over. And if you find yourself thinking about things, what you need to do is just bring your attention back to the present moment. Everyone does that. It's a normal reaction. And what we need to do is find that place of compassion for ourselves. That of course I'm thinking about that. And of course, it's hard to bring myself back to the present moment, but coming back to that present moment is going to help. No matter how hard it is. But just to keep your mind a little bit focused, we're going to shift now to a breathing technique. So rather than awareness, let's go to regulating our breath. So for this, what I'd like you to do is make your exhale just a little bit longer than your inhale. So maybe if you're breathing in for a count of four or five, you're breathing out for one or two more beats beyond that. So you're not making it too long. And whatever length you choose, if you start to run out of breath, if you start to feel like you need more oxygen, need more air, just pause, sort of let your breath settle, take a breath or two, move around a bit if you need to, and then come back to making your exhale just a little bit longer than your inhale doesn't need to be super big. You don't need to force it. Just a little bit longer. Now you're going to add something to the end of that exhale. So you breathe in. Nice, easy breath. As you breathe out, nice, easy breath. And at the end of the exhale, in that last one or two beats, what I'd like you to do is draw your lower belly. So if you put your hand between your belly button and your pubic bone, and when you get to the end of that exhale for the last beat or two or second or two of it, just gently draw your belly away from your hand towards your uh, spine or towards the back of your body. So it's like you breathe in, you breathe out. And right when you get down to that end of the exhale, draw in gently. So you feel the muscles engaged there. And then relax, breathe back in in a relaxed fashion. Breathe out a little bit longer than you breathed in. And when you get to the end of that exhale, draw in. Lower belly draws in towards your spine just a bit. Just continue with that. Trying to find some smoothness, smoothness to your breath. Trying to find that right amount of effort of gently drawing in. Now, as you continue to do this, if you feel when you draw in in your belly that you're drawing in or tensing up other parts of your body, do your very best to really focus on here. So maybe you need to do it more gently so you can just get that muscle in your lower belly to draw in. Or maybe it's just a matter of going through your body and making sure that your face doesn't tense up, that your jaw doesn't tense up, that your hands or your toes don't tense up while you do this. It's not that it's bad or that it's wrong to do that. Just for right now, it's just trying to focus on that way of breathing. All right, now see if you can stay with that breath. But rather than draw in your lower belly at the end of your next exhale, what I'd like you to do is curl your toes. 
for that second or two at the end of your exhales and let them go while you breathe back in again. Your toes stay relaxed while you breathe out. But at the end of that exhale, that last beat or two, second or two, just curl your toes so you feel them get a little bit tense. And then let them go again as you breathe back in again. Great, breathe back in again. Now when you breathe out next time, you're not gonna use your toes. This time what you're gonna do is lift the, your, the balls of your feet and the heels up. So if you're laying down, your knees are bent, you'll lift the balls of your feet and your heels up in the last second or two, then let them relax. So this time you're engaging the muscles along the front of your lower legs at the end of the exhale. And then you let them relax again as you breathe back in again. Keep those muscles relaxed while you breathe out again until that last second or two, that last beat or two of your exhale. All right, keep on with that breath, but shift from the front of your shins up to your thighs. So when you get to the end of your exhale next time, just engage the muscles of your thighs, like, just like you're trying to tense them up a little bit. And let them go as you breathe back in again. And as you repeat this, same idea, sort of check in with the rest of your body. Do your very best to just tense up here in your thighs. If you feel yourself getting tense in other parts of your body, see if you can let that go. So that same easy inhale, that same easy exhale, and at the end, engage the muscles of your thighs, one or two beats, and let go. Next time you do this, you're gonna shift up to the muscles around your pelvis. So feel those muscles inside your pelvis, almost like you're trying to pull your pelvis in, to, in the sides towards each other, the front and the back towards each other, just for that second or two at the end of your exhale, then let it release. So you shouldn't see or sort of feel yourself body move around as you do this. and find that just right amount of effort, not too much effort, and definitely not so much effort through the rest of your body. Now shift from there, come on up to the lower part of your torso. So this time when you get to the end of your exhale, you're gonna draw your belly back in again. Try to feel like you can pull the sides of your lower abdomen and lower ribs in and the, your lower back. Everything is trying to draw in towards the center, just a little bit and then you let go again as you breathe out. I know as I just did that, I could feel my legs are really quite tight. So I'm gonna try next time at the end of that exhale to see if I can just bring it in just around my low back, my sides, my belly, and then release as I breathe in again. Great. And now shift up to your rib cage. Same easy inhale, same easy exhale. And those last two beats or so of the exhale, draw in the rib cage, sides, front, back. You're pulling everything just gently in and then let it go as you breathe back in again. You're trying to find that right amount of effort so you can focus your effort there and not a lot of the rest of your body tenses up. And also trying to find that right amount of effort so that when you let go, it does let go. Sometimes if you squeeze too hard, it stays uh, more tense when you try to let go at the end of it. And then shift from your torso to your shoulders and your arms. So at the end of that exhale next time, you're gonna tense up around your shoulders, upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrists, hands, gently. And then let that go as you breathe out. Or breathe back in again, I mean. So at the end of the exhale, just gently engage one beat or two beats around your shoulders and arms and hands. Let it go. So breathe back in again. And then shift from your arms up to your neck and your head and your face. So just squeeze a little bit at the end of your exhale around jaw, face, lips, tongue, forehead, neck, and then breathe in again, release that tension. 
breathe out again. Easy exhale until the very end, that last beat or two, just create a little bit of tension around your neck and jaw and face and head. Then release it while you breathe back in again. Then at the, after you finish that next exhale, just let that go. If you're laying down, just shift yourself around a little bit. If you're sitting in a chair, shift yourself a bit. You may find that some of the, there's some residual tension from even, even doing something as small as that. So the idea of these is really just to, to get your mind focused on a breath. And, and so maybe you could use a breathing tech like the technique like this at a time when, when the pain is actually building and a time when you're saying, I need to do something to take my mind off the pain. I know you, if you've been on these other sessions, you, you've heard us talking about being able to use techniques that would change the chemistry of your body and, and change the pain uh, right now. So sometimes what we want to do is work on things that would calm our nervous system down. But there are some times when we want to do techniques that would take our mind off of the pain for a while. That would give us just a break. And sometimes a technique like you just did, it focuses you enough, like it gives you something enough to do that you can stop pay, paying so much attention to the pain or maybe actually stop paying the atten attention to the pain um, at all for a while. Of course, you're doing something healthy at the same time. So this isn't full on distraction and doing something that would provoke the pain later. The idea is use it to take a break, but also do something that's healthy for our body, which is learning how to let muscle tension go, learning how to breathe in a more controlled way. So you can try it like that. Right? So remember that some of these techniques that we do in these, these sessions, you can use to uh, when you feel like uh, you need to calm your nervous system down. And sometimes you can do them through the breathing techniques as a way to uh, take your mind off the pain for a while. Different techniques you'll find will work better in different time. Okay. So just let your breath come back to an easy pace now. Whatever breathing pattern would work better for you. Maybe you just want to make your breath a bit longer, a bit smoother, a bit softer. Maybe you want to breathe in so it's more like this wave, this gentle wave. Um, or maybe you just want to focus on what happens with your breath as you do this. So you get to choose right now how you work with your breath. But if you do notice your breath getting tight, try to soften it, try to release some of that tension and smooth it out a bit. So we're gonna work on some rotations today. So I just want you to rotate your wrists around to start. We're gonna sort of do rotations and twists all the way through the body. And so as we move the body, remember to check in, see how you're doing. So if you're laying down, you can just have your arms resting on the floor and you're just twisting your arms around like this. Excuse me. Or if you're sitting, you can actually sit and just roll your wrists around in this way. Just noticing what's happening to your breath, noticing what's happening to your body. And then let your wrists relax just for a moment. Take your attention up to your arms. You're going to take your arms straight up from your sh shoulders. So if you're laying down, your arms will be just a little bit off the floor. So lift them just a little bit off the floor. And what I'd like you to do is take your right arm and roll it back so your thumb sort of rolls back and your other arm so it rolls forward. And then start to roll them opposite each other. So the right arm rolls forward and the left back at the same time. So keep on breathing while you're doing this. It only goes so far as it feels like the right thing to do. Keep your breath smooth. Remember, you can stop anytime you want. You don't have to keep on going just because I'm keeping on going or you think you should have to. Great. Now, when you finish your next exhale, wherever you get to that, just let your arms come on back down again. Give your shoulders a little bit of a shift around if they feel like they got tense and they didn't relax when you stopped. Notice what's happening in your breast and your body and your thoughts while you're doing this. And your pain, make sure you pay some attention to that. Bend your elbows again, whether you're laying down on the floor, or sitting in a chair, bend your elbows. We're gonna do the, the moving the arms again, or the twist. So roll your right thumb out and roll your right thumb, uh, left thumb in, and then start to work on the opposite twist or the off, opposite roll of your forearms. Now you gotta figure out the right amount here. So if you do have any pain in your shoulders or neck, how do you create the right amount of tension there? If you have any pain in your wrists or forearms, just go to the part that feels, the, the spot that feels just right. And remember, you can go up to the edge of the pain and give it a little touch, or what you could do today is say, that's where the pain starts. I'm just gonna work where it feels good. 
So you have that choice, right? And then after you, you just notice your breath again, when you get to the end of your exhale, just let your arms come on back down again. Again, if your shoulders got tight, if your neck got tight, if you're sitting and your back got a little tense, just move it around a little bit. Just give it a little bit of a break there. Now this one's gonna be a little bit harder if you're laying down. So if you're laying down, you're gonna to need to, to bend your elbows, take your arms a little bit away from your body so your arms are resting down. And you're gonna roll this arm back and this arm down. All right, so if you're sitting, same idea. You just bring your elbows away. You're gonna roll your right arm back, your left arm down, and you're gonna do this. Now, if you're sitting in the chair and you're feeling like holding your arms up like this, feels like more than you wanna continue with, just put your arms here, and you can do like a windshield wiper here. Right? If they're all right here, go ahead with that. Remember, stop when feels the right for you. If your breath gets tight, if your body starts, tension starts to build up, if you're starting to feel like, I really don't feel safe anymore. You only take your arms as far as feels comfortable going. Right, when you finish your next exhale, just let your arms come on back down again. Give your arms a bit of a shake, give your body a bit of moving around if that feels good. Take your attention to your neck now. And what we'll do is we're gonna do a couple different movements with your neck, just a straight on twist to start. So if you're sitting, be in a tall position. Uh, if you can't sit in a tall position with your back away from the back of the chair, get your back against the back of the chair. If you're laying down, fine to have your head on a pillow or on the floor. And so what we're gonna do is just start by looking over your right shoulder. So whatever feels good, come back to the center and over the other side, just back and forth. Whatever feels like the right amount for you today. So don't worry about how far you go. Go to the spot that feels like the right effort. Place to feel safe. Place where it's easy to smile while you do it is often a good idea. And even with this, if you're feeling the pain building up or it's not feeling safe anymore, or you think you're gonna regret this if you keep going, just pause. If you're doing okay, carry on. Great. And after you come back from the left side next time, wherever you are, come on back to the center. Same idea, shift around if that feel like the right thing to do. Bring your chin down to your chest. Look up towards the right side, come on back down, look up towards the left side and do this. So only so far as it feels like it's the right thing to do today. If it feels good to look up really far, go ahead and do that. If you know that's fine, go ahead. If you're not sure, it's okay to go to that spot where you feel like, oh, that's a bit of a challenge, but I know I'm okay. Feels like I'll be good later. As soon as you start to get that sense of, ah, oh, it doesn't really feel safe anymore to go that far, or I think I might not be okay later, then it's time to pause and check it out. And maybe you pause and at the end of it, you say, yeah, actually that still feels okay. Maybe I could have carried on or maybe that was a good time to stop. It doesn't really matter which one you come to. All right, move things around if you need to get rid of some tension. If you're sitting on the chair, hopefully you can come to the edge of the chair if you're laying down. At this point, what I'd like you to do is to straighten your legs down on the floor. So your legs are gonna be straight down the floor and you're gonna position your legs, if you're sitting, take your legs out in front of you and just roll your legs in so your big toes touch. And then roll your legs out so your big toes go the other way and then your big toes touch again and then they go the other way. Now we're gonna sync this up with your breath. So what you're gonna do is as you breathe in, you roll your legs in. And as you breathe out, you roll your legs out. Some of you may have done this before. So you can see I'm using my arms to help guide you with what you're doing here. So breathing in, legs roll in, breathing out, legs roll out. So keep on doing that if that feels okay, but remember you can pause anytime you want. And if you'd like to uh, do a little bit more challenge, we can do actually the opposite roll with the arms. So as I roll my legs in, I'm gonna roll my arms out. And as I roll my legs out, I'm gonna roll my arms in. So if you're laying on the floor, your arms are just down to the side. And so your arms are out and your legs are in. And when you breathe, Breathe out, your legs are gonna go out, your arms are gonna go in. Breathe in, legs in, arms out. Breathe out, legs out, arms in. 
So if you're sitting, you can do it this way. And this is a lot harder to do sitting than it is laying down most of the time for me. So you try to smooth out the movement. If you get stuck, just pause. So breathe in, legs go in, arms go out. Breathe out, legs go out, arms go in. Now you can add one more thing if you want. If you add the one more thing, it's the movement of the neck. So as your legs go in and your arms go out, you roll your head towards the left side. And as your legs go out and arms go in, you roll your head towards the right. So breathe in, head goes to the right, arms go out, legs go in. Breathe out, head goes to, oh, I'm sorry, I just said that right, sorry. When you breathe in, your head goes to the left. When you breathe out, your head goes to the right. And you're syncing that up with your legs. So breathe in, legs go in, arms go out, head goes to the left. Breathe out, legs go out, arms go in, head goes to the right. Sorry that I, I think I confused everyone there, but hopefully that you'll be able to recover and we'll get this right again. If you lose it and you need to pause, go ahead and pause. Hopefully that you're taking this a little, with a little bit of playfulness as you do it. All right, let go. If you're still moving, just pause your body. If you need to move your legs around, if you're laying down, or your arms around, or your neck around, if you're sitting, do the same thing. Come back and check in again, see how you're doing. Notice what's happening with your breath. Notice what's happening with your body. Notice what's happening in your thoughts and your emotions. So this time we're gonna roll the body around this way. So a little bit of a rotation around. Keep your breath going as you're doing it. So it's like you're rotating your body, you're shifting your weight to the side, to the front, to the other side. Now, if you're laying down, sorry, I should have told you, if you're laying down, you're actually gonna keep your upper body still. You're gonna bend your knees and bring them up towards your chest and use your hands on your knees and take your knees around over top of your hips that way so where if you're sitting you're moving your body on your hips and pelvis if you're laying down you're moving your legs around on top of your hips and your pelvis and whatever way you were going go back the other way again just find the right amount of movement check in with your breath check in with body tension make sure it's not building if a little movement would be better then go ahead and do that all right then come on back to the center. If you're laying down, let your knees release, bring your feet back down to the floor. You can take your legs straight or just have them bent. If you're sitting, just shift around, release some of that tension again. We're gonna come into a twist now. So if you're laying down, what you're gonna do is bring your knees on up to your chest again, and you're gonna take your knees over towards the left side, bring them back to the center, take your knees over to the right. Now, actually, I just showed you a big movement. It could be small. Same idea as while I'm sitting here, the first thing I'm gonna do is just bring myself into a twist to the right side, bring myself to a twist in the other side. So here I'm just twisting my body on my hips and my pelvis and my back, whereas laying down, you're gonna be moving your legs around over top of your hips and your pelvis. So if you're sitting, it might be just a small movement that you're doing, right? So as you do it, keep on coming back to this idea of what's happening in my breath, what's happening in my body. Make sure that you're not going too far Right, so you can have your hands on your knees while you're sitting, or you can bring your body right around and come further if that feels okay. Doing a lot of rotation and twist today. So if you feel like it's time to take a, a, sorry, take a break, go ahead and take a break. Come on back to the center again. If you're laying down, release your legs back down to the floor, either take them straight, or have your feet on the floor and your knees bent again. Just check in, make sure everything's doing okay while you're here. Now we're gonna move from here up to a standing position. So if you're laying down, maybe roll onto your side, make your way up to a standing position. Uh, if you're in a chair, come on up. If you're in a chair and standing up is not gonna serve you today, you can stay in the chair 
And what we're going to do is get you once we're standing is get you to imagine that you are in a standing position to feel your feet on the floor, feel that length of your spine, your legs gently engaging. You're going to imagine being in a standing position while we do some twists and rotations from there. So I'm just going to move this chair out of the way here. So from a standing position, just find your feet, feel your feet on the floor, feel that nice length of the spine. So if you find yourself sort of slouching down like this, just try to bring yourself up a little bit. Sometimes it can help like we did at the beginning to draw your lower belly in towards your spine a bit, draw your lower ribs in towards your spine a bit, then lift your heart up just a bit. Take your attention to the back of your body and draw your shoulder blades together just a little bit. Then take your attention back to the front of your neck and see if you can pull the front of your neck back towards the back of your neck just a bit. So you're just a little bit taller. You're not standing like you're a soldier. You're just a little bit engaged. You can feel your feet in the drawing end of your lower belly, the lower ribs, shoulder blades, neck, while your chest is up and the crown of your head's up a bit. You're just standing just a bit taller. The kind of thing that if you release the tension, you probably find yourself back here in that sort of waiting position that you we go to where we're sort of standing and waiting for people. So you're just trying to draw yourself up, create a little bit more energy in your body while you're doing this. All right. So with your feet about hip distance apart and your knees a little bit, you know, we say soft, but a little bit bent, so not locked back. So have yourself in that position, put your hands on your hips, and I'm just going to do rotations from here. So just take yourself to the side. If you're in a chair, you can put your hands on your hips and just do small rotations. So as you're doing this, just notice what's happening in your legs and your knees and your back, all the different parts of your body. Make sure it feels safe. Make sure it feels like the kind of thing that's going to serve you, the kind of thing that's going to help. It doesn't have to be a big movement. Just feel the twist. So you're probably feeling some twist down around your ankles and around your knees and around your hips. Just notice what's happening there and make sure you're going to the right amount. Great. Right. And when you come back to the center again, just pause, let your arms relax. And then you're going to take your feet just further apart this time. So maybe just a little bit further than you were, not super wide. I've got my, hip, my feet about twice as wide, I think, as, as my shoulders would be, about that. All right. So again, I'm going to let my knees get a little bit soft while I do this. But this time I'm going to take my arms out to the side, have that length of the spine, feet uh, solid on the floor. My breath is calm and easy, and I'll twist from here. Great. Just whatever would feel right. And if your arms get tired from being out here, you can put them back on your hips, or you can even just put them down at your sides. Whatever feels like the right thing for you today. And then let your arms come on back down to the sides for a moment. This time what I'm going to do is get you to try this again, but we're going to come back to that uh, extended exhale that we did at the beginning. So take an easy breath in, take an easy breath out, and at the end of that exhale, draw your spine in just a little bit, sorry, your belly in towards your spine just a little bit. But this time I'd like you to hold it while you come back to that breathing in and that longer exhale, keep your lower belly drawn in just a little bit. I want you to see if you can keep on breathing that way. So the, the, you breathe in, you make your exhale a little bit longer, but you're drawing in the whole time. And you're going to put your arms back out here or hands on your hips again and do that same rotation as you did before while you feel yourself drawing in just a little bit in the lower belly. So it can be hard to do because as you breathe this way, if you tighten up those muscles, you might feel like you got too tense. And that probably means you're tensing more things than you need. So if that's happened, just pause again. Breathe in, easy. Breathe out, easy. Then draw in here at the very end, the last beat or two of the exhale, just a little bit. And then keep that while you breathe back in again. Keep it while you breathe back out again a little bit longer than before. So it's still a little bit longer exhale than inhale while you go. And so maybe what you do is you breathe in, and you breathe out as you come back to the front. So you slow down coming back. And you breathe in. And you slow down the movement because your exhale is longer until you come back to the front. So 
the whole time you're staying drawn in a bit, breathe in. As you come back to the center, slow down the movement. You're still drawing in here. Try it one more time this side. Then let your arms come down. Bring your feet back in together again. Just pause for a moment, shift around if that feels like the right thing to do. Now I'm going to move my chair a little bit here because we're going to try this a, a similar kind of thing this time. So feet a little bit further apart than your shoulders. And what I'd like you to do is to turn the right foot towards the right side. And you're going to turn the other foot. So put the weight on your toes and just bring the heel back. And then you're going to just switch your feet around the other way. And switch your feet around the other way. And so try this with your hands on your hips. So maybe you need to move your feet in sort of two movements. But the idea is you turn, you roll your right foot in, then you roll your left foot out. You roll your left foot in, then you roll your right foot out. Great. Now, if you want to keep on doing this, if this feels okay, keep doing this. If you want to just make it a bit more challenging, what you can just do is have your arms out and you turn and you bring your body around this way. Notice what's happening in your breath as you're doing this. Notice what's happening in your body tension. And then see if you can draw in in your belly just a bit. So if you feel like you're sort of sagged down like this, draw in your belly a little bit, see if you can get your spine up a little bit taller and keep it up there while you come around in the twist. Rather than twisting from here, draw yourself up and come around into the twist the other way. Great, and then come on back to the center again. Let your arms come back down again. Shift your legs around a little bit, give them a little bit of a break. Check in with your breath, check in with your body, body tension, if there's any discomfort or pain, notice that for a moment. Just see how you're doing before you carry on. We're going to do one more one more standing before we move into a, a laying down position. So feet are about hip distance apart again. Feet are solid on the floor. Put your hands on your hips. If you're sitting in the chair, put your hands on your thighs or on your hips, whichever way would go. Same ideas, get really tall. Draw in that lower belly again just a little bit. So just a little bit draw it in towards your spine like you're doing at the end of that exhale. But keep that all the way through your smooth inhale and exhale. Shift your weight over onto your left foot. Foot. Keep on drawing in, keep on breathing. Bring the left knee up in front of the left hip and put your hand on there. And this time what you're gonna do is try to do your best to keep your pelvis towards the front. And you're gonna roll or rotate that knee or hip out to the side. So this may be the best place for you to be right here. And if it is, stay here, breathe, draw your belly in. If you wanna have your hand on the chair, go ahead and do that. If you feel like going further, you roll or rotate that hip out. If you want to go further, I'll see if I can do it today. While I'm doing this, is turn your head over to the other side. So the opposite rotation of your neck. You're still drawing in here in your belly, still lifting up, still trying to breathe calmly. Bring your head back, bring your knee back, put your foot down, give yourself a bit of a break. So I'm hoping that while you're doing that, you use the chair or your hand on a wall or something if your, your balance was a little bit off. We're gonna try the same thing on the other side. So <clears throat> hands on your thighs or your hips if you're sitting, on your hips if you're standing up. Feet are about hip distance apart. Ever so gently draw in in the lower belly. Feel the length of your spine. Shift over to the side. Bring your left knee up in front of your left hip and put your hand on your knee. You're still drawing in a bit. You're still smoothing out your breath. Try not to get too tense in your body, but keep on a little bit of tension here. If you're good, stay here. If you want to put your foot back down, go ahead and do that. If you can, take that knee out to the side. Just roll it out to the side to that just right spot. Keep drawing in if you can. Keep your breath flowing. Put your foot down anytime you want. 
you want to go further, turn your head over the opposite shoulder. If your balance is off, just put your hand down on something or put your hand against the wall. There's no value in taking the risk of falling over while you do this. Put your foot back down. Give your body a bit of a shift around. And from here, we're gonna come on back down onto your back. So take your time coming down. If you wanna do any stretch on the way, come on and do that stretch on the way. So once you're laying down on your back, either have your knees bent like my knees are right now and your feet relaxed, or you can take your legs straight out, have a pillow behind your knees if that would feel all right. And just for a moment, release the tension. So you're just standing up, you're just holding up your hips and using the muscles around your hips. Just like it did at the beginning of the class, smooth out your inhale, Lower down your exhale. And this time, instead of engaging muscles, if you feel muscles are tense, release that muscle at the end of the exhale. So you breathe in. And as you breathe out, make it a bit longer. And at the end of that exhale, if anything's tight, let it release a bit more. So let your arms release down towards the floor. Let the muscles around your hips or your legs from standing, let them relax a bit. Then bring your right, sorry, your left knee up, bring your right knee up. And we're just gonna do a little bit more of this twist. So roll your knees around over top of your hips. So you draw them in to the side and down. So you might be limited in terms of how long your arms are. You might be limited in how much your back likes to do this movement. But just roll your knees around over top of your hips, wherever feels good, then go the other way. So find a gentle amount of movement, an easy amount of movement in your hips. So rather than the twists and rotations we were doing from standing where there was pressure down on your hips, now you just got those hip joints moving around gently. And then come back to the center. <clears throat> Let your legs come on back down again for a moment. Let your arms rest at the side. This time you're gonna cross your left ankle over top of your right knee or hip. And so just start here, have your arms out to the side just a little bit and come down into, roll down into twist this way, come on back to the center, let your legs go to the other side, wherever feels good, come on back to the center. Now, if you're sitting in a chair and it's okay to cross your legs, so cross your legs like, like that, like you were just in that position. <clears throat> so, I don't know if you can see better if I do it from the side. You don't have to change up yet. But if you're sitting in a chair and you can cross your legs from there, you can do rotate, twist your upper body on top of it rather than from <clears throat> laying down, crossing your legs. And now you're twisting your, your <clears throat> legs and pelvis and back from, from below rather than from doing it from on top like you'd be doing in a chair. So the same idea though, you're still just trying to go to the right amount, the place to feel safe. And then pause, come on back to the center, uncross your legs, <clears throat> shift around a bit if that feels like the right thing to do before you do the other side. And when you're ready, just cross your leg over, let your knee relax back down a little bit, and then come into a twist. Letting your knees go to the side, wherever feels like the right amount. You don't need to do that breathing technique as you are doing before. You don't need to draw in your belly like we were doing before. Just feel the sensation of a gentle twist of your low back and hips and pelvis. Try to find a, an amount of movement that feels good. When you come on back to the center next time, uncross your legs. Once again, sort of reposition yourself. Make sure you feel like you're <clears throat> not still in a twisted position, I guess is the best way to think about it. So your knees are bent this time. Take your feet a little bit away from your hips. Your arms are to the side again. And just one more twist, but this time what you're gonna do is come on down and see if you can find a place where you can stay for a few breaths. And if it feels okay to turn your head away, so you're looking away from the direction of your knees, go ahead and do that. 
If it's better to have your head looking up, if it's better having your head going the same way as your knees do that. So sort of choose what you're gonna do with the twist of the upper part of the spine. Remember, you don't have to wait until I come back. If it feels like the right thing, come on back again. So knees come on back to the center and then try the other side. Just take them down to that just right spot and stay. Release tension, let your breath just flow in and out. Don't need to control your breath right now. And then if you haven't brought your legs back up again, next time, bring them on back up to the center. Just shift everything around again so you feel like you're lined up again. <clears throat> so we're gonna do that opposite arm leg neck movement like we did at the beginning. So take your legs straight out down the floor. If you're sitting, you're gonna need to move towards the edge of the chair would be best. Wherever you get to, you roll your legs in so you feel like your big toes touch and then let your legs relax. Let your arms relax with your palms out. And now when you breathe in next time, you're gonna roll your feet in or legs in. When you breathe out, your legs roll out and your arms roll in. When you breathe in, legs roll in, arms roll out. And just do that movement for a few times. Legs in, arms out, legs out, arms in. This feels like an okay movement. If you wanna do more, what you can do is add in the movement of your neck. So as your legs roll in and your arms roll out, you just turn a little bit to the left. As your legs roll out and your arms roll in, you'll turn a bit to the right. It doesn't have to be a big movement with your neck. Just a small, turn your head to the side. And see how much you can smooth out the movement. So how smoothly you can move legs, arms, and neck in those different ways. Remember to be a bit playful about it. When you come back to the center next time, just let your body relax. If it's easier to relax with your knees bent, then knee, bend your knees. If you're sitting in your chair, go to the back of the chair now and let your body relax to the back of the chair. Or you can have your legs straight out in front of you or flat down the floor with the pillow underneath your knees if that would feel best. So if you're in a laying down position, arms are relaxed, head is in a supported position, legs are bent, feet are on the floor. One last time, come back to that breath like we did earlier. So breathe in for a count of three or four or five. Breathe out just a little bit longer for a beat or two. And then those last beat or two of your exhale, draw in your lower belly towards your spine just a bit. Then when you breathe in again, let it relax. Breathe out just a little bit longer than before. Last couple breaths, draw in your lower belly just a little bit. Let that relax, breathe back in again. Breathe out, extend your exhale a bit longer. The last couple beats of that exhale, just draw your lower belly in for a moment. Then let it go. One more breath. One more extended exhale. Then last time for today, just gently drawing in. Now you can stay right here if that feels right. If you'd rather come up to a chair just for the ending, go ahead and do that. Or you can sit on the floor on a cushion or just on your mat. I'm just gonna sit on the cushion here. So find a bit of a tall spine, let your body relax again, just like you did at the beginning of the class today. Check in, see how you're doing now. Notice what's happening in your breath. Notice what the sense of energy feels like in your body. Notice what's happening in your body in terms of tension, discomfort, or pain. And 
Notice what's happening in your thoughts and emotions. And for a moment, just check in with how your heart's feeling. And maybe there's something you want to write down from the experience today. Something about the breath technique or something about one of the movements or how you approached it and how it went. If there is, just sort of hold on to that idea. Um, Because when Jen comes on back here again, she's going to ask you uh, about... um, filling out a poll and maybe you have some questions. So uh, I'll pass it back over to you, Jen. Thanks, Neil. Thanks for that session. Thanks for everyone for participating. Uh, Here's the poll. Just uh, take a minute and fill that one out. In the meantime, if you do have any questions for Neil, uh, just put them in the Q&A or put them in the chat or wherever, wherever you can find a place to ask them. Uh, I'll read them out to Neil. We'll just give that a minute or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes um, sometimes it can be hard to know where the Q&A is and where the chat is. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> I hope that those uh, pieces aren't <laughs> preventing people from, from uh, asking questions. Okay, super. Well, Jen, if people have questions... Oh, so it doesn't um, look like there are questions. Okay. Go ahead, Neil. Go oh, sorry, ahead. I was going to say that um, uh, people could e- email us with questions if they had them and we can answer them next time as well, right? Yeah, that's a great idea. So uh, if you would like to email us at education at painbc.ca, we're really happy to do exactly as Neil said. We'll collect them and then we can um, answer them in a, in a following session next week, mm-hmm. June 2nd. We could do that. Okay. All right. So just a reminder that we do have another session tomorrow with Will Bateman. Um, and then Neil is back on the 2nd and the 4th. I think those sessions are at one same time as today. So we look forward to that. So, oh, hang on. Uh, you know, I always do this spiel and then a question comes up. So... <laughs> I like it. Uh, okay, so Neil, the question is, what does holding in the belly like? Like, how are you demonstrating holding in the belly? What does that do? Oh. Um, why do you have to do that? Why do you have to do that? Well, I guess I, the first thing I would say is you don't have to do it. Um, the idea was to, um, to oftentimes when we, uh, sorry, low back pain and pelvis pelvic pain are really common. Um, and so uh, sometimes in some of these sessions, we're putting in things that would help help people who have specific issues. So when we, um, when there's pain, there's often muscles of our body that are gripping. And then there's often other muscles of our body that tend to be almost inhibited or hard to turn on. So the idea here was to, uh, to try to help to re-engage some muscles, the, the sort of the deeper abdominal muscles sometimes uh, have a it's a hard we have a hard time turning them back on again or re-engaging them after uh, if there's pain around the pelvis and low back and um, so when we draw that in the other thing is that that besides turning that muscle back on again a lot of people feel that engaging that muscle gently creates a sense of um, sort of being feeling less fragile or feeling more strong or more stable and so um, we can use it for that, but also uh, the idea of engaging a muscle at the end of it was to add in, so we've got this easy breath in that's longer exhale to try to turn on more of the parasympathetic nervous system or the calming parts of the nervous system. But adding in this little muscle engagement was intended to uh, also to get your mind to focus on something. So that if the pain was demanding your attention, hopefully this would demand enough attention to get less of the 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 attention to the pain while you're doing it. Great, that makes sense, Neil, thanks. Um, Does it also, uh, you mentioned it, it gives the sense of uh, being more stabilized, but does it Mm. actually make you more stabilized? That was the follow-up question. Yeah, that's a great question. So um, the, 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 the physical therapy researchers have been trying to, you know, figure this out and, um, I think I'm right to say that the the most recent research is suggesting that when they try to measure the stability around the low back and the pelvis, 
before and after people did sort of these core exercises, but there didn't seem, seem to be a measurable improvement in uh, stability, but there was definitely an improvement in a, a sense of the person feeling more solid, more less fragile. Um, so, it, but the problem is that maybe the measurement tool wasn't good enough to detect it. So uh, mm. I have to sort of, to clearly answer your question, I would say is we don't know. Right, and did they measure, did they just measure it immediately before and after, or did they measure it over time and the effect of doing it with repeated practice? Yeah, that's what they're actually looking at is that if you did it for a certain number of weeks, and so I can't remember if it was eight or 12 weeks, mm -hmm. but it's just sort of that standard period of time that we believe that if you practice something consistently, we should be able to measure changes because muscles change. Mm -hmm. um, but so they, they uh, like I say, as far as I remember, they didn't find a measurable change in it after having practiced it for quite a while. But um, I think that's the important part too, is that, um, Sometimes the improvements that we get from movements have to do as much to do with um, us as humans than us as um, a sort of machines or anatomical structures. Um, that uh, the improvement that we can feel from movement often is because of, of how it changes our sense of ourself or, or, or our body awareness. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, I think you can extend that into, you know, just feeling you know feeling better a little bit be just because you've been outside for the day or you've had a little bit, bit of movement um could could you kind of generalize it to, to that sort of is it the Absolutely. same feeling you yeah. yeah and i think there's a part of the issue that we have is that we've taken uh movement and exercise and it, it's almost like we've medicalized it or made it all about the physical and uh it, it's it's on people talk about how we can use the mind to change the body but what's really odd is that people don't often talk about how we can do things with their body to change our mind. Um, and mm -hmm. you, you know, you can't do things with your body without changing what's happening in your thoughts and your emotions and your sense of peace in the world. It, it, it's all going to change. You know, we are, we are biopsychosocial spiritual entities. And so uh, sometimes the benefits that we attribute to the body are actually benefits that have more to do with the other aspects of self. Yeah. Yeah, I, you know, I've certainly experienced that during this pandemic where I found that, uh, you know, a, a little bit of exercise really helps lift my mood for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and that I can tell you that there's solid research around that um, when, when people have done movement practices, contemplative gentle movement practices like this, uh, when they start with severe anxiety or even clinical depression, that you see um, really significant changes in uh, depression, anxiety, grief, anger, um, through all those sort of negative affect from doing things that are more physical based. Amazing, yeah. so cool. Okay, well, thanks for that. That was really interesting. Um, I always like our chats at the end of this, uh, as at the end of the practice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so everyone, I hope you have a great rest of the day and I hope we can see some of you tomorrow and uh, again next week. So have a, um, a peaceful and a restful day, everyone. Take care. Bye for now. Bye. Bye.